Ever wondered what it's like to work in the apparel and fashion industry in Chicago? How a designer started their brand? Or what a production workroom looks like? Then join us as we go for a visit. Today, we're visiting with Jay Arbutman of the Sourcing District. Hi, I am Jay Arbutman. Uh, my company is called the Sourcing District. The Sourcing District is a sales agency. I represent 10 uh, fabric suppliers and garment construction necessity suppliers. And uh, we have a heavy emphasis on ethical and sustainable sourcing. And uh, we also uh, uh, built and maintain a couple of websites. My family was in the business. So I grew up with a, with father and uncles who were in the women's coat business in the Chicago area. And uh, I actually earned my first dollar uh, in the apparel business in 1965, as hard as that, 60 years ago, and uh, picking orders. And when I was in my early 20s, I went on the road and sold coats for them. And uh, really, I've never had any other kind of job. I worked in the uh, garment side of it until 1999, and then on this side of it after that. Well, like anybody else, uh, I open up my email first and uh, see what I have to follow up on. I also uh, uh, built and now maintain a couple of websites. I always like to keep everything up to date, and uh, that takes a significant amount of work uh, as new products come online. And, uh, of course, I have to study those, understand them, figure out who they might work for. And then I also do a lot of work on my social media, my Instagram and Facebook accounts. So that's part of what I do. And that's certainly a significant part of my day. I wear almost all the hats. I wear like a lot of one people business. Now my wife does assist me uh, when I go into a setup or a show, if she's available, she comes with me. And that's great because she's terrific at uh, at doing this. And uh, she, you might say, is my IT department. Um, and when we do uh, Zoom shows, uh, she also manages those. But uh, the rest of it is pretty much up to me. Uh, I do well working at home. It's a good deal for me. Uh, uh, last night I was working till 11 o'clock, but it's stuff I enjoy. And um, so it's really not like work. Uh, you know, there may be uh, uh, the news on or a baseball game or something, but, but I, I work a lot of times in the evenings. Um, but I have time for uh, our animals, I have uh, friends and family. So, um, you know, the one great thing about having your office uh, in your home like this is, yes, it never goes away and you're always working at it, but... It also means if you want to uh, go out to lunch or you have some other thing to do that uh, it, it's it's easy to get away and you're not looking over your shoulder and worried about whether somebody is uh, missing you. So I've done this for about 17, 18 years in some way or another. I started out just with buttons and zippers and I did that for several years. It was a side business for me. It was a side gig. Um, in 2009... Um, it stopped being a side gig. I started adding fabric lines. And uh, so obviously that helped my business grow. But in 2012, I believe it was, or 2011, I started representing Kendor Textiles. That was a big change in what I was doing. Um, a lot of uh, my products just got better. And uh, so it took me several years for uh, my business to mature a bit. Um, so I, you know, struggled with it like a lot of people who start up businesses and, uh, uh, but, uh, starting in about 2014, um, my business is the last 10 years, uh, I've had a very significant business. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I was hoping to, uh, be in a situation where I was selling product that I liked, uh, mm -hmm. to people I like and, 
I, I that's pretty much what I do. Um, uh, not that every customer is a dream, but most of them are. And um, they're interesting, and I like what they do with the fabrics that I supply. That part of it is is always interesting, seeing uh, how uh, people take your fabrics and what they do with them. So yes, I think, uh, and, and I, you know, I kind of feel this uh, uh, leaves me as part of the creative process, and I like that. And um, so yeah, I think this is pretty much what I mentioned. You know, it's funny when you say that, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, getting the, uh, the latest iPhone that has a little better camera on it. Um, that's, that's probably the number. It's, I, I think workspace being something completely different now than it, than it did, where you think about showroom space and so on. But today, um, while certainly people come here and, and shop my lines, um, most of my business is done uh, through uh, using my computer, using the U.S. mail, uh, using uh, my the companies I represent to send out samples. There's a lot of samples that go in the mail. Um, and so space isn't as important. The physical space in this office isn't as important as the laptop I use, the, you know, the monitors I use, the, the, the iPhone that I use. Though that's, those are a very significant part of my office and what is uh, meaningful to me. Now I could use more space and we have some plans to, to do that. Um, but uh, um, uh, right now I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with the space that I have. Uh, the only thing I would do is look for technical advances. No employees, no contractors. Uh, I do see customers here. Um, you know, I probably, will average two to three appointments a week. That's that's about right. Uh, most of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis happens through the telephone, the computer, the mail. That's Those are uh, things that I'm always using. But uh, the space is pretty much, uh, it's pretty much me and like I said, two or three drop-ins a week. You, you can't be perfect. So, you know, sustainability uh, is not a perfect thing, but if it's, but it's something we strive for. And, uh, and sustainability and ethical sourcing is on my end of it is in a sense easy because I work with suppliers that I trust. And if it's a supplier that I don't really trust, they're not here. And, and I have jettisoned suppliers for, you know, the reason of not having a, a warm and fuzzy feeling, you might say. But uh, many of my suppliers are very much aware that sustainability and ethical sourcing is a, is a heavy consideration in uh, fabric purchases today. Um, so what we've got, as opposed to, say, 10, 20 years ago, is we have a lot more of the cellulose, uh, 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 Lyocell, Ecovero, Model, Micromodel, Cupro, a lot more of the sustainable fibers that are not just organic cotton. Uh, uh, you've got other things now that are sustainable or considered sustainable. And the other thing that, that's really wonderful is I actually have one company that actually makes the stuff in the United States, not easy to find. Um, and uh, then you're just leaving a, a less of a carbon footprint because of the nature of the product. And they also use sustainable fibers uh, for many of their products and, and strive for that. So uh, 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 certainly leaving less of a carbon footprint, uh, uh, avoiding toxicity in the, uh, in the manufacturing, are all things that we're looking at on every fabric. I feel pretty connected to the industry. Um, you know, I think one of the problems that as indie designers that we have is that there, there, there isn't uh, uh, this one warehouse of information or there isn't this one place to get everything. And um, so, 
you know, I, I, like anybody else, I mean, I feel pretty connected to certain people or at certain institutions and, and maybe less so to others. Um, but I certainly feel connected to the industry. I've uh, been in it my whole life, almost 60 years now. And, uh, uh, you know, I have, uh, uh, I, you know, I went to FIT. Uh, I, I uh, lived in New York for 10 years and worked on 7th Avenue. So all those connections also are, uh, leave me pretty darn connected to the industry. More selling events, more ways for designers to make money. And uh, more selling events, um, you know, uh, production mode, for example, just opened a store. And uh, there are other uh, designer-led stores and pop-ups that I think are really valuable. That's the thing that I think we need to do more of. So stuff that does go on like One of a Kind, Renegade, that's just terrific. I think we need more of those types of events, more ways for designers to get their product out in front of the public. Well, that, that's a good question, actually. I would say that, um, and I think this is a challenge I've done okay with, but I, I think the, uh, the, the, the rapid change in society and the rapid changing in our business and the nature of our business, the rapid change in product. So things move incrementally faster uh, as we go along and keeping up with that is, uh, is the challenge and it's also the, the part that I kind of like about it. Well, I think education is an important component and though I only had a bit of formal education, um, I think uh, getting knowledgeable uh, about how garments are made, um, how fabric is made, you know, how things happen and uh, uh, understanding the marketplace are all would be great things um, to, uh, for everybody to have a better grasp of. Um, you know, I think that, that this is an emerging business. The indie design business, business is an emerging business and it's not done emerging yet. So uh, I think that uh, uh, if there's some change that hasn't happened yet, just wait, it will. Um, and it's the same even on my side with fabric. When people ask me for something I don't have, Sometimes I'll say to them, maybe I have some knowledge about this, but I'll say, well, no, not now, but wait six months and it'll be, it'll be something we'll be doing. And in fact, many times that happens. Uh, companies are really expanding their offerings to indie designers. <laughs> um, uh, well, first of all, you know, I just like to say, this won't be a surprise, is that, uh, um, the amount of work you put into it actually has something to do with the results. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of times there isn't a direct benefit. You don't post something on Instagram and a check comes in the mail. Uh, but it is uh, uh, building up uh, information in, uh, in social media, building up information in the marketplace, uh, getting out there, meeting more people, having more contacts, and, and, and basically that's what, what I do and, and uh, I'm, I'm not unhappy with the way I'm moving forward. Yes, so I don't, I've stopped participating in trade shows for the most part. I do my own, I, I go and set up uh, uh, in, in, I've done recently, I've done one in Minneapolis, I did one in Indianapolis last week. I've been in Austin, I've been in Denver, I've been in St. Louis, I've been, you know, a bunch of other places this summer. And um, uh, so I am looking at doing something in Kansas City uh, in October or November. We've got a contact there we're talking to. We're talking to some people in Asheville, North Carolina about doing something there. But I have the good fortune of really working with some good people. Um, Ken Dort and Sextet, uh, um, all come out with new and interesting product on a pretty regular basis. Motif Handmade is a really interesting new line. And uh, um, so th that's kind of a new concept for uh, a lot of the designers we work with. So um, we certainly believe that newness is terribly important and we, sh and we show a lot of newness. Mm -hmm.